one more gonna take. Just slice three steaks, it's not hard. Why do you always three? give in to her, my man? What do you mean give in to her? What's your problem? Can somebody help me? Please, bring your nose. I'll see you You've gone down to a three. As an American, it sometimes can be difficult to discover hidden gems that are buried beneath the rough. There are so many films being released nowadays that it may seem like the overall quality of movies is decreasing, but I beg to differ. England has produced some of my personal favorite films and shows of all time, like Michael Lee's Naked, Pal and Pressburger's The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, Fleabag, and The Trip. Both of my favorite films from last year are British films, and the country overall has released a plethora of classics. Many things can be said about the state of the industry as a whole during the pandemic. But if anyone says that 2021 was a bad year for film, they clearly haven't seen Boiling Point. If you haven't seen Boiling Point yet, I recommend you rent it right now if you aren't based in the UK. For those who currently reside there, the film is now streaming on Netflix, and I hope everyone sees the film before proceeding with the video, since it is a rather detailed narrative that is best experienced by not knowing much beforehand. I'll try not to go in depth on too many plot points, but proceed with caution as always. The following films will be discussed slash mentioned in the video. Boiling Point is a masterful work of filmmaking, and every single aspect in the film is near perfect. It is a true one-take film with no cuts or editing. Some mainstream films like Birdman and 1917 are recent examples that feature an edit to appear as one take. Boiling Point along with Alexander Sokharov's Russian Ark are two of my favorite films that fall into the first category. The technical prowess needed to pull off such a feat is truly remarkable, and the feature is used to enhance the story, not to distract from it. While Russian Arcs One Take strives to achieve spectacle and is heavily driven by its masterful production design and a mass collaborative effort, Boiling Point uses it to boost the characterization and claustrophobic environment to create an effective story. The perfect slow buildup of intensity throughout its 96 minute runtime is due to the combination of raw storytelling techniques, direct camera work, powerful performances, and realistic dialogue. Having elements in one's film executed to perfection is a surefire way to boost the star rating in my book. If you've seen some of my other videos, you probably can guess that many of my favorite works feature non-narrative structures and fall under a more visual-based approach. Part of the beauty of cinema is that there are so many ways to express a certain story or feeling, and Boiling Point doesn't need anything extravagant to do so. This film and my other favorite film of 2021, which will be getting its own video soon, both surround their narratives around essential and public workers. The whole world is still going through the COVID-19 pandemic, and the basis of many societies relies on these workers. We should all be incredibly thankful to those who have sacrificed so much for us and have allowed many to work from home. The actor turned director Philip Barentini dedicated a portion of his life to serving the public and he decided to make the film based on his own experience. It's evident that the atmosphere of the restaurant comes from one who is an expert in the field. The lack of kindness toward many in the workplace is a key part of the film and it also touches upon the wide umbrella of mental health. Here's an excerpt from an interview with Barentini himself. It's, a, it's amazing, mind blowing. And for people who don't know anything about your film, Boiling Point, can you tell us a bit about it and sort of the inspiration behind it? So, yeah, so it, Boiling Point is a, it's a one-take, true one-take movie set in a restaurant on the busiest night of the year, Christmas, uh, the last Friday before Christmas. And it focuses on a chef, but not only a chef, his team and the customers. And it's shot in one take, like I said, so it's 90 minutes and we dip in and out of people's little personal lives and pockets and things like that, but it's focused on... You know, the, the themes of the movie are addiction and, uh, and mental health and, and, and people struggling. And that was what it's based on is my, my life. I worked as a chef for 12 years when I was acting, a struggling actor, you know. And I've seen a lot of things happen in that world. And I, I always wanted to sort of, you know, make something that was truthful and realistic. Um, and, and that, you know, questioned people and, 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 and made people think, you know, if I know somebody's struggling, then maybe I can reach out and help them. Or if I'm struggling myself, I recognize that in me and maybe I should get help. You know, whatever it may be, that, that's, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to make it. Getting into the story, the main character Andy Jones is portrayed by the iconic actor Stephen Graham. Andy is the head chef at a high-end restaurant in London, and his personal problems start to blend in with the stress of managing the facility overall, and almost every nightmare that can be dreamed of occurs. 
No job is easy, and the film gives a harrowingly accurate portrayal of just how hard running a business can be. From the opening scene, we already learn that Andy is going through a tough time with his family. Following a health and safety review, the restaurant's rating decreases from 5 stars to 3 stars, providing a first window into how his personal life starts to affect his work. If you didn't know anything about the film prior to your first viewing, it would be safe to assume that it's only a normal drama. Unlike other anxiety-inducing films that immediately nauseate the viewer and drown one in sheer disgust like Gaspar Noé's climax, Boiling Point allows itself to rise slowly in temperature before exploding. The title is an obvious metaphor for the pressure that mounts upon Andy's shoulders and the rest of the staff. The camera work is quick and effective from the get-go. It doesn't take long to adjust yourself to the style. The seamless transitioning between characters allows the viewer to be completely immersed in the environment. Since the events are happening in real time, one might think that the story naturally would slow down. However, similarly to the style of the Safdie Brothers films Uncut Gems and Good Time, the action doesn't stop. Once Andy's problems are put to the side, they are replaced by another worker's. Seeds of misfortune are planted as each minute passes and one can feel the internal pressure that each person is facing. This scene features Andy meeting a celebrity chef and his former colleague Alistair Skye, who brings along a top food critic. Hello, mate. Namaste, chef. Namaste. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, nice to see you. Hello. Critic, Sarah Southworth, as you know. Hello, Hi, Sarah. Oh, hi, really nice to meet you. Lovely to yeah. meet you. Come and have, have a quick glass with us, yeah? Just a quickie. Oh. I should really get back to the kitchen with snow underneath, do you know what I mean? Just have Let a quickie. Let them do their thing. You have a glass of wine, right? Okay. It's gorgeous. Thank it's you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Mm. There we go. <clears throat> ah. No, there's your glass. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Happy Christmas. Cheers. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Mm. That is good. I had no idea you were coming. It was, it was a last minute thing, you know. So he, this one mentioned that he was coming and I've been, I've been wanting to come. You know, free Christmas treat. Yeah, you know, you're on a wear capacity, are you? <laughs> However, unlike the Safdie brothers' characters in their films, the protagonists in Boiling Point aren't bad or malicious at heart. The narrative builds around each person rather than the character altering the story based on their own actions. In Uncut Gems, it's Howard Ratner who makes terrible decisions that result in his undoing. In Good Time, the people around Connie Nicholas cause him to get into nasty situations which he must narrowly maneuver through. Although the linear ascent of anxiety is featured prominently in all of their narrative structures, I love how Boiling Point's events are not as affected by the conscious, vile decisions made by certain people. No Way's climax focuses on the spiking of a bowl of sangria, and the film rides on the exogenous energy emitted from the people directly affected. Multiple issues contribute to the driving force in Boiling Point, the patrons, the staff, the chef, and Andy's family. A simple yet calculated plot goes a long way in the film, and its strengths are clearly highlighted here. To the naked eye, Andy seems to be the crux of the restaurant's ability to function. I never worked in one myself, so seeing how each member of the staff is as important as another illuminated the significance of the teamwork in this specific setting. This system works like a well-oiled machine. If one component breaks, it all fails. What? Are you, are you mad? No. <laughs> You're two I'm hours late. You're two no, hours no, late. My landing go off. The task no, 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 don't come with this shit. You are being two hours late and I have a whole new alone. Uh, it's I was, working on only. Yeah. I was here nine, thirteen minutes ago. Everyone has to stick up for one another, as you can see. Not only does every worker need to fend for themselves, but they must ensure that those around them succeed as well. This is far from simple, as the host of the restaurant, Beth, has to try and balance the patrons' needs without overworking the staff. The camera is surveying the action, gathering the pressure of everyone on screen and transferring it to the viewer. Since there are no cuts, the relentless energy lingers within one's mind, allowing no time for breaks. When serving the public, there are unfortunately the occasional people who believe they have the right to be disrespectful towards others. Just in case you haven't seen the film, but you've reached the point in this video, I'll only mention the horrid behavior of Table 7 very briefly, but it's safe to say that they are a culmination of every single waiter and waitress's worst nightmare when working. I tried to get her on time. The train I don't want to hear your excuses. Go and serve, serve table seven now, quickly. Okay, off you go. How'd the audition go? What audition? You said she wasn't at the audition. Evening, guys. So sorry about the delay. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. I'm Robin. I'm going to be a waitress this evening. 
Can I get you anything to drink? Yeah, I'm going to order wine for the table. Okay. Um, can I get a bottle of the uh, Chateau Marie, please? Yeah, is that, yeah, is that red? Yes. Bottle of white? Bottle of white? Bottle of white, yeah. Which one? You know the one I like, don't you? She's got expensive taste. <laughs> uh, right, and so. a bottle, which is the most expensive? Uh, if it's this one right at the end, the Samuel Blanc. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll take that bottle of Samuel yeah? Blanc as okay. well, please. Amazing. Um, and I can get some tap water for the table. Uh, nice. No, no, I'm not swilling it down with, you know, I'm paying 200 pounds for a bottle of wine. Uh, uh, do you do bottle of water? Oh, yeah, sorry. Bottle um, of still? 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 Yeah, still. perfect. Bottle of still, sorry, I'm just handing out. Can I get a cranberry juice? You know, no, no cranberry juice. We're drinking wine tonight. That, You'll be fine. Oh, my God, he doesn't drink. He's drinking wine tonight. OK, so the two bottles of wine yeah, and a bottle of still water. Yes. Yeah? Perfect. OK, great. I'll go get that for you, and then I'll come back to take your food order. Thank, Thank you. you. The customer isn't right in every instance. Both nightmarish ends of the spectrum are showcased within the film as well, since the literal worst possible occurrence happens to one of the patrons as they eat. You'll have to watch the film to find out, and nothing else should be said about it. It's incredible how well the moment is integrated into the story. Sadly, this is a result of a calamitous unintentional decision, and these things happen sometimes. Part of the film's success is derived from its realistic and splendid performances. You probably already guessed how much admiration I have for Stephen Graham's performance, but the rest of the cast cannot be understated as well. Vinette Robinson, alongside him, shines as Carly, and this scene showcases their dynamic brilliantly. I told her to use the other one, it was my fault. All right. With Carl. All right, all right, all right, all right. OK, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. She needs to stay calm, all right, yeah? Take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. What, we gonna, what am I going to do? We'll get through it. All right? It's my fault, though. Carl. Yeah, OK, OK, OK. We just need to take it one step at a time. OK. All right? Yeah? On top of it. No, 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 no. The chain reaction of events that occur in the film is sublime, and no event depicted is without consequence. Screenplays of this quality are present rarely, and there isn't any aspect of it that fails to deliver in terms of realism. Andy struggles with various health issues throughout the runtime alcoholism, drug addiction, and depression. The rampant problems finally reach their own boiling point, and the heat is too much for him. The ending is a knockout, and the amount of emotion piled into the final minutes by Graham is staggering. Andy is certainly far from perfect, but this reinforces that the human beings in the film are flawed and complex creatures, and they are more than just machines sent to do bidding. Despite his faults, I empathize deeply with him, and I'm sure many others will too. Normal life is difficult, and empathy goes a long way. The pressures of having to maintain a perfect mental state while masking one's true feelings in a work environment where it isn't acceptable not to be okay shouldn't have to be done. The same way that the viewer gets anxiety from watching the film is juxtaposed to a seemingly normal patron's experience at a restaurant. We think we are the ones who are feeling stressed while watching, but we don't have to go through what the characters do. The respect goes both ways, and I believe the film attempts to convey that what you give is what you receive. The saying, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about, be kind, always, is intertwined into the film's message for me. Berentini uses experience from his life to translate the message into the boiling point of how we believe that we're the only ones going through these difficulties. These so-called picture-perfect environments, like high-end restaurants, present this delusion of grandeur for certain individuals, while in reality, everything is far from okay. The anxiety that the viewer feels is only a fraction of what these people deal with daily from strangers, and sometimes unintentionally even those around them. Every time you meet a public worker, be extra considerate toward them. Overall, the film is an incredibly powerful experience and its multitude of themes present a deeper meaning than presented on the surface. It has already cemented its position in the best of the decade list so far for me, and the four BAFTA nominations it earned are all incredibly deserved. Be sure to support this work in any way you can, the performances are perfect and you'll be entered into a world you've never known before. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe with notifications on and leave a like down below. Don't hesitate to share any thoughts on the video or film, and if you want to see any specific content regarding your favorite piece of media in the future, just ask in the comments. Also, if you want to support me and my work, consider checking out my Patreon, which I just created. The link is down below in the description. Thank you all for watching once again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.